Welcome to Logitech. I'm your host, Dr. Raymond Chang. Now, what's common about US Vice President Kamala Harris and UK Prime Minister Rishi Sonak? Well, they're both of Indian origin. Indian politicians seem to be ruling the Western Hemisphere these days. In Canada, Justin Trudeau's cabinet had four India origin ministers, three men and one woman, all appointed in 2019. Now, in the UK, Rishi Sonak, who is also of Indian descent, assumed position as the Prime Minister on the 25th of October just last year. It's no secret the top US companies love Indian origin CEOs. Look at Google, Microsoft, and even most recently Twitter. But what if Indians assume top political posts or as head of states? Now in this episode, we'll find out. Now, we all know that U.S. tech businesses love Indian origin CEOs. They are tech-savvy and perform very well when running a very tight ship, not to mention during times of difficulty like the post-COVID times. So well-renowned businesses like Microsoft, Google, Twitter, and some of the most recognizable tech giants are all hiring Indian CEOs or, or CEOs with share origins from India. Now, indeed, reacting to Twitter's new CEO, Parag Agrawal's appointment, Tesla owner Elon Musk said that USA actually benefits greatly from Indian talent. So if India Indians are known to be that good, what if there is an Indian-American president? Well, yes, we do have Kamala Paris um, well, as the vice president, current vice president, but the news has it that there are more and more Indian politicians or politicians with some kind of an Indian background possibly running for the US presidency in 2024. Now, recently, Nikki Haley, who is also of Indian origin and former governor of South Carolina, has announced her plans of running for the U.S. presidential campaign in 2024. Now, we all know that the current vice president of the United States is Kamala Harris, who is also of Indian origin. So, so could Haley become a major opponent for Harris, as they basically share very, very similar racial background? Now, if she were to run for the president and try to challenge Donald Trump, she might not stand a chance, given the fact that white Americans American male is still the better option for most American voters. But if she runs for vice president, now that's another story. Now back to Nikki Haley, who decided to challenge Trump, Ron DeSantis, and Mike Pompeo. Now she was the 116th and also the first female governor of her home state, South Carolina, from 2011 to 2017. Now she was also the 29th US ambassador to the UN for two years from 2017 to 2018. Now, Haley would be the third Indian-American politician to seek a presidential nomination following Bobby Jindal in 2016 and the current vice president Kamala Harris. Now, interestingly, Haley had previously claimed that she would not run for the candidacy if Trump would also seek for nomination. And according to news reports, Haley told Fox News that her comments about not running against Trump were made before some perceived flaws of President Biden's administration such as the withdrawal of U.S. troops from Afghanistan and the recent dramatic rise in inflation in the post-COVID economy. But according to CNN, Trump might refuse to endorse the party's nominee if he loses his primary race. So Trump probably wants to scare them off. Now yet, people have not stopped campaigning and have started to go further ahead in their respective campaigns. When Trump was asked in Hugh Hewitt's radio show as to whether he would commit to backing the GOP nominee if it wasn't him, now he said, it would depend. I would give you the same answer I gave in 2016 during the debate. It would have to depend on who the nominee was. Now, now this very vague answer shows what Trump's intentions are regarding his techniques on handling his opponents. Now, however, it also raises a question. Is this cutthroat attitude going to bring supporters for Trump? Now, also, is this still a viable strategy in duplicating his win in 2016? How much success can we see in it so far? So what is Haley's appeal? Now, being a woman and of Indian origin, Haley would definitely bring diversity to her campaign. Now, and as American women want to see women rule, and, and mind you, women voters are more reliable and predictable than men, people search for a chance to diversify. Now, we are in an era of feminist activism, ongoing demand for women's rights and women empowerment. Now, where there's a large population of women strongly believing in female authority figures. Now, some even have a distrust in male authority figures. And also, the Indian population in the United States is not small, mind you, now, which is around 2.7 million as of 2021, and which made up around 6% of the total foreign-born population. 
So Indians, of course, would readily vote and support an Indian authority figure simply for the sake of support. Well, in fact, there may be voters from other minority groups who would want to show support for Haley for the very same reason, diversity. And according to CNN, Haley is unlike many of her cabinet members, and, and she engineered a very smooth exit from the Trump administration on her own terms, which Trump doesn't look happy about it at all. Now, and in a Fox interview, Haley said that it was time for a new generation. It was time for more leadership and that Americans had to remember too that they had lost the last seven out of eight popular votes for president. And she further added that she didn't believe in old men politics and you don't have to be, you know, 80 year old just to be a leader in DC. Now, there is a very strong statement from Haley, and that means her campaign calls out directly to young voters. Haley's speeches are intended to be motivational, but to Trump, they seem just a bit too ambitious. So the answer is how interested are young people in politics these days? How many of Trump's fans are going to turn to Haley? Now, she may have said a lot of things, but she's obviously hinting that she could win against Trump. Now, when she endorsed the then presidential candidate Marco Rubio in 2016, she spoke of the effort around removing the Confederate flag in a speech slamming candidate Donald Trump. She continuously talked about new leaderships, new generations and all of that. Now, she keeps hinting that current leaders are old, outdated, and it's almost like Pepsi's marketing strategy. Yet when Hillary Clinton was the Secretary of State, Kamala Harris, the Vice President, there has never been a female president in the history of the United States of America. Now look at Indonesia, they had President Megawati. Look at the Philippines, they had President Corazon Aquino and President Gloria Macapaca Arroyo. And even India had Prime Minister Indira Gandhi back in the 60s and the 70s. Now the year is 2023 and the United States of America has yet to have its first female president. Are they going to have one in 2024, especially when she is from a colored race? I honestly doubt. So until then, ciao. Before you leave, please be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and share this with your friends. See you in the next episode.